Yo, welcome to another live stream from your old pal, Wizard Foo. Today is kind of a special day. I'm actually announcing um, that uh, I'm renaming the new game. So I'm just pretty excited about this because the name Loadragger, I didn't really like the whole time. There's something bugging me about it. First of all, it was hard to spell. Second of all, it was really hard for word of mouth, right? If you can't spell something, you can't really visualize it that well in your head. And so it becomes sort of like blah, 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 blah in your brain. And then when you try and tell a friend, you're like, oh, I love this new game. It's called blah, 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 blah. And how are you supposed to... Whoop. How are you supposed to tell a friend when you can't even tell a friend? Right? So no good for uh, word of mouth. So today, I'm going to be announcing that I'm renaming the new game to Wraith Binder. Wraith, just like a ghost. So um, let's get this... Uh, actually have this uh, this is the new um, key art image I'm working on and oh <laughs> I have that backwards right now anyways I'm gonna be working on the logo today so this is totally just temporary um, graphic I created with uh, the text tool here but I'm gonna be drawing an actual Wraith binder text logo today and I'm gonna be renaming the projects folder today this is exciting times. Um, and I'm also simplifying the design of Wraith Binder. So Loadragger was about five versus five. Wraith Binder is focusing on the one specific game mode of Loadragger I had planned where it was just Battle Royale. So it was like, imagine imagine Songbringer uh, online, like a real-time action Songbringer, but it's all, it's all like... Uh, the Battle Royale. Ten players, last person left alive wins. And uh, the, the difference, though, is that Wraithbinder, when you die, you actually become a wraith that is bound to the person that killed you. So you actually fight on for the side of the person who killed you. So that's what's going on. What's up, Diamond Killer? Yeah, new name day. Man, I'm stoked. I've been trying to... I've been. I've been scheming how I'm going to be announcing this for weeks. I had this idea months ago. How you doing today, Dami Killer? Let's start renaming stuff. You like it? Wraithbinder? Sweet. Sweet. Now we got Wraith Binder. <laughs> yeah. Stoked. Oh. Okay, we're going to have to like do a lot of like rename type stuff. First of all, we have to close this poster. There's Songbringer's poster. Let's open up poster one again. Hey, wait a minute. Is Photoshop smart enough to know where that file moved to? Some things on Mac OS are. Uh, I don't know. Just chilling today? Yeah, sweet. The calm before the storm. I always love the calm before the storm. Actually, I love the storm, too. I don't know, maybe I'm kind of a masochist. But, uh, I like, um, I like it when things get challenging. Okay, so we want to go to, well, first of all, we're going to get rid of that. Now we need this main link all right and I had open art wallpapers poster one all right so we've got that we're gonna be working on today's stream but there's a few more things I need to get settled here in the code and stuff like that well we're gonna have to close this wait I think this is actually Xcode I think is smart enough but I'm going to reset it anyways. I don't even need Xcode open today. Really. But I guess we'll keep it open to, to verify that it all works and stuff. 
Oh yeah, we're gonna have to rename that. Yeah. Yeah, under stress. Like, there's good stress and then there's bad stress. Why not just name it Songbringer 2? Well, Massey, that is a very good question. Because Songbringer 2 is already a game that's going to be made at some point. This is a different game. Ha! <laughs> good. I love that. Dude, I love that. It's a good question, man. Yeah? How's it sound, Massey? Wraithbinder. Is it better than Loadragger? I think so. I know so. I could tell my friend, hey, play this game Wraithbinder. And they'd be like, Wraith? What's, what, what do you mean Wraith? Like, I would say like, Wraith, like a ghost. <laughs> I just totally like contradicted myself. Okay, we need to rename that project. It's better, right? It's better. Oh, wait, I think we can, in Xcode, if we open up, uh... how you doing today, Massey? Let's open up this, and then we can just rename it from here. Yeah, easier to Google, right? That's the thing. You can you can actually spell Wraithbinder. Hey, there you go. See, most I think most people that are into games, what do you call them, gamers? Most people that are into games, they know how to spell Wraith. Oh, this is so satisfying. Yeah, rename all that stuff. Rename. Done. Okay, there's um, a few other think targets. Look. Oh my gosh, I can actually draw a cool logo now, now that I have this sweet key art image I'm swizzling up. Okay, uh, salad dongs. What's up, brother? Howdy. How you been, Salad Dongs? What you been doing? Oh, wait. Let's rename it these other important things here. Like that. And, um... <laughs> a special Christmas version called Wreath Binder. I can just see it. I can see it. You're sitting there by the fire with the Christmas tree on, the bright lights, all the presents under the tree, your whole family surrounding you, all your little nieces and nephews and uh, your family, all your whole family, all of them. You're all there, and you're all binding wreaths together. Just making wreaths. <laughs> you always have the best suggestions. Man, where have you been? What's up, Alessandro? Wraithbinder is a character in He-Man. Yeah, I saw that when I snagged the .com. Yeah, so that's the thing. Whenever you're naming a game, you got to be like, how, okay, first of all, can you spell it? Like, is it good for word of mouth? But second of all, can you get the .com? Does somebody already have it? And third of all, is there already something else named Wraithbinder or whatever you want to name your game that would conflict? And just because it's a character in He-Man doesn't mean it's anything special. There's no trademarks on that or anything. Dental Flossed. Hey, do we know each other, Dental Floss? I thought, uh, did you rename yourself or something at some point? You been doing good? Glad to hear that. What you, uh, um, Salad Dogs, are you still using that engine, that game engine? Um, what's it called? Oh, it, was, it looked really good. I, was, I had considered actually using it. Go Dot, yeah. You've been using Godot? Oh, Professional Novice, that's right. Yeah, what's up, Dental Floss? Looks like we got everything renamed there. Still your favorite engine? Good. 
Yeah, technically this is a new game now. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing as Low Dragger, except that I've simplified the design. So Low Dragger was a five on five game, right? With lots of different roles. It was kind of a complex thing. I'm simplifying that all now. So one of the things in Low Dragger was it was gonna I was gonna have a battle royale mode. So basically, Wraithbinder is just Songbringer with Battle Royale online real-time combat. Except when you die in Wraithbinder, you become a Wraith bound to the person that killed you. So that's the interesting twist of this game. So you fight on, you keep on fighting on in the match for the person that killed you. So it's simpler, right? First of all, it's a name that people can share. And second of all, it's a lot simpler of a game. You can explain it to a friend easily. I can explain it to you guys more easily. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Stagman? Yes, I am working on something new. This is called Wraithbinder. It's in the Songbringer universe. So um, it's a 3D voxel engine that I've been working on. Them. Let's see if this even works. I'll, I'll try and show you what I got so far here. But yeah, it's basically it's basically Songbringer, but Battle Royale. So it's it's the last person left alive wins. So yeah, this is what it looks like. It's running at a horrible slow frame rate right now because I'm streaming. But yeah, you can rotate the camera, right? You're still going to have a Skybot. So you're still going to have Jib. You're going to be able to customize your character. So imagine this. Imagine it looking like this somewhat. But yet, you're in an arena with nine other players, and the last person left alive wins. Oh, and there's a boss in the middle. So, what's up, Kobe? Yeah, am I going to write my own net backend? Actually, I'm using my publisher's Double Eleven. They already have a backend for networking. I haven't used it yet, so I'm not sure what I'll need to add or tweak or whatever, but they've got it. They're, they're, they're excellent coders. You want to play Voxelbringer? Yeah. Huh. So yeah, right. If somebody's owning, they're going to have an army of wraiths with them. Yes. Yeah. You can definitely get some momentum in this game. You can definitely crush other players. It's not, it's not going to be like, you know, fair. <laughs> it's not a fair game. Yeah, um, but there's also a boss. So there's a big, there's a boss in the middle of the arena, and um, if you kill the boss, the boss becomes bound, bound. No, wait, no, no. If you kill the boss, you become the boss. That's it. So yeah, and then you get to control the boss's his character as. He, there's a few. There's some nuances I'm forgetting right now because I wrote all this like a month and a half ago. I wrote this design document, and it's now all coming to fruition. But basically, there's a there's 10 players, the last person left alive wins, everybody that dies becomes bound to the person that killed them, and there's a boss which you can become, or you can become bound to the boss too. So if you die fighting the boss, you're fighting for the boss's team. Oh yeah, it's actually a much better frame right now than it was before. <laughs> it was, it was totally a slideshow version. It was like one frame a second. Now it's better. What, what are we at actually right now? You shipped a BR? What's a... Wait, sorry. What's a BR? Thanos mode? Oh, Battle Royale, really? Sweet, dude. Islands of Nine. Let's check it out. Totally in. I'm, uh... I always love checking out games. It sold pretty well. Nice, man. First person, yeah. Yeah, dude. These are rad graphics.
Yeah, this is one of the things about this kind of game, right? Is the community can kill it. And you never know if it's going to get off the ground. That's the biggest risk to making this kind of game. Is like, if you don't get the multiplayer base, or if it fi if it suddenly goes away, you're not going to be into it too, too much longer. Yeah, dude, this looks sick, man. Wait, so only a month or two? Yeah, timing can be something huge. Man, dude, this is a lot of work. Oh, yeah. Could have updated it. So wait, what were you guys thinking of doing to update it? And how would that have helped the, the community? Man, props. This is super, super awesome. And I know it's not just the, the visual mastery, but like the multiplayer mastery is huge too. The programming in this has got to be awesome to have this tight of an FPS multiplayer game. You know what I mean? We need a furry royale. Oh, just fixing bugs and polishing? New game modes? You did the networking? Props, dude. Hell yeah. Oh, I got questions for you then. So if you, um, uh, what, uh, what did you get your, your lag down to? Like, and how did you handle, how did you handle, like, um, lag in general, right? So you're, you know, like, a, I've written a multiplayer game before real time, but I had it locked to a certain delay of input. So there was always a 200 millisecond delay before input would even ever be considered. You know what I mean? It mattered on your server type? Huh. Because I'm thinking for this one, I kind of want to do like a flexible delay. So like, if all the players, you had, okay, so you had AWS servers. I'm thinking like a flexible delay where like, if a player is, has, if all the players in the match have really good, um, you know, really good internet, really low lag, then it can be super duper low on its, on its like delay. Yeah, custom built servers for sure. Oh, custom built actual servers, like the hardware? Whoa. Okay, so yeah, you changed your latency at runtime. All right, cool. Did you do anything like predictive input like, did you do any of that awesome, like, what 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 kind of stuff did you do for your multiplayer to really, like, get the, get rid of any multiplayer glitches, any lag glitches? Like, what did you do to that, like, made it, made your multiplayer code really good? I'm going to have to close this background window here. It's kind of making my CPU go crazy. Movement stuff, yeah. So you did client side prediction, okay. No server side prediction? So shoot a bullet on the owning client, right? On hit, ask the server if it was possible, and then apply the damage. Right. So client side prediction, gotcha. Cool. So I really want my multiplayer code to be tight for this game. This is gonna be a lot different than like a triple A type battle royale. This is a indie battle royale. It's like an indie and it's gonna be songbringer style combat, so it's like 16-bit era almost combat, you know, it'll, it'll still, it'll have 360 degree movement this time though. Yeah, server has the authority, that's, yeah, and it can correct mistakes. Now that, that's so key, 
because the so my last game I made that was multiplayer was a a, a peer to peer game, and so it was so hard like trying to figure out who's the host, like who has authority. Yeah, you guys are technically indie, totally. Yeah, I know what you mean. I guess I meant more like 16-bit graphics for this game. Makes it makes it seem more like makes it seem more indie in a way, even though it's it you know technically it is. Let's see if we got any more. Oh, there's a few of them. A million? Damn, dude. How'd you pull all this off? Good job, man. Heck yeah. Um, how many other people were on your project? Oh, you're just a programmer? Gotcha. You had 40 people on your team? Dang. That is... That's a big team. I mean, for a not, I mean, for that's like a medium-sized game company, I guess. But that's a decent-sized team, man. Now you're working in a studio with 200 people. I read the uh, I read the uh, GDC's uh, GDC publishes like a little document showing like trends in the game dev industry, and most like oh gosh, what was it like? Most game developers work at a company with something like an average of like 500 people like that's the average in the game dev industry right now it's like 500 person teams maybe i'm totally exaggerating but it was at least it was triple digits it was like 100 200 people like at least i think it was more like 500 but that's yeah show us you got a link or some screenshots or anything The Outer Worlds. Can I play? Uh, if can I play this? Um, is this going to be copyright? Con shoot. This might be. Sorry, I might not be able to play this on the stream right now. If you're using any copyrighted music, or if you're, or if your graphics are copyrighted, I can't play this. But I can check it out later. The Outer Worlds, huh? A single person, player, first person RPG, dude, sci-fi, sweet. So it's from Obsidian and Private Division. Which one are you, were you on the team before? Which one was what was the team that made uh, Islands of Nine? Uh, the, so Dami Killer, the camera, the camera angle is going to be based on forty fives, so like it is now, but your movement is three hundred and sixty degree. Yeah, I'll 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 watch it later. So you're you're part of Obsidian, cool. Oh, and then Define Human to Downs of Nine. All right. Sweet dude, props, major props. That's awesome. So um, do you like where you're working right now? How's it going? You're 20 years old. Ha! <laughs> Good for you, man. When did you start coding? You moved out to Cali from Alabama? I'm in Cali. What's up, Biter Kid? You started coding when you're eight? Right on, dude. You're like you're like a coding prodigy. Hell yeah. You hear that, everybody? On this stream and everywhere else in the whole world. Kobe is 20 years old and already coding multiplayer AAA quality games. That's amazing. Okay, so you you said you sucked until last year. So what what was it that break what made you break through? How did you get to the point where you're like, hey, now I'm now I'm here and I'm doing this, doing the thing well. Yeah, man, things are well, Biter Kid. Very well, very well. I'm so excited to be re renaming this game and. Uh, Simplifying it. You had an interview at id? Dude, right on. How'd you make a fool of yourself? Why did... 
you you probably just made your you probably just felt like you made a fool of yourself. But what what happened? You still okay? So that triggered you into into starting your journey into being smarter. They were oh they were grilling you on vector math. Vector math's tough. I had to re look up a ton of that stuff last week doing particle systems. I think we're good there. So we got that. We renamed the project. Oh, there's a few other things. Okay, look, roles. We're, we'll, we'll rename the roles and stuff later. Role component, role component. Okay, we don't need to change any of that. But we do need to change a bunch of stuff here in this make file. Oh, we need a new we need a new text-based logo as well. You can work your way around vector and matrix. I am I learned all this stuff in university. God, when was that? I'm 39 years old now. Um and I learned all that vector math and stuff in when I was 21. So it's been like 18 years since I learned any of that stuff. But I know what you mean, dude. It, it's so easy to get caught with your pants down trying to explain vector, <laughs> vector or matrix math to anyone. Right? This is some hard stuff. Fighter kid. Oh, should I? Should you worry with a console port as a hobbyist with full time work? Um, you never went to uni, Kobe. Wow. Uh, so, Biter Kid, dude, it depends on your game. It depends on your project. It depends on the interest level, I would say. I would say judge your interest level based by uh, on asking the people that are already playing it. You know, if you have an alpha share, you know, or a beta or something like that. Is it accessible? Oh, you mean at, from, your, from your perspective as a developer, is it accessible? Yes, but it is... Um, probably more difficult than you imagine to create a console port. Some of these console ports are like re like writing an entire game engine. You know what I mean? It's a lot easier to just work with somebody else that has already has a game engine that works with PS4 or whatever. So it can be it can be quite time consuming to port a game. Yeah, Microsoft's been great about supporting indies. Nintendo's been better about supporting indies. PlayStation, I think, is also really good about supporting indies, like, or just supporting, I don't mean to say indies, like, I, I mean just developers, really, is what I mean. Um, but yeah, is it accessible? It's it's not as accessible as you think, I would, I would say, actually, to tell you the truth. It's expensive. Um, but that, that said, if sometimes you can have, like, a certain niche game that works so well on console that like you'd be an idiot not to you know what i mean so i'm, I'm it kind of depends on your situation you know am i making sense at all biter kid yeah it's this kobe's got it right here you basically have to write an entire different rendering system for all of those every one of them is different playstation's got its own rendering xbox got its own rendering switch has got its own rendering and I would I would just judge the interest based on your current following. You know what I mean? Like ask people if they want to play your game on console. If you have a Kickstarter, you know, do, or if you don't have a Kickstarter, I would recommend doing one. Uh, or do, doing something to really like publicize your game and get and get a, get a following built up, and then ask your following if it's a good idea. If they if they would ask your following if they would buy a console version of it. You know. Wow, dude, nice. You had 40k people on your Discord. Did you guys do anything special with your Discord? Alright, let's start drawing this logo. One time you broke it? <laughs> Man, this makes me laugh because I broke I break everything. But yeah, what uh how'd you guys break it?
by saying press F to pay respects in general chat. What what happened because of that? Yes, a Discord. I'm definitely going to do a Discord for this game. Yeah. Once it gets up to like alpha beta phase, or probably earlier than that, I'll start a Discord. Oh, yeah. Did it just like flood the server with the F key? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, man. Whoa, how did this logo get backwards? Let's start drawing stuff. Oh, that means I need to crack out my new tablet. Boom! Check it out. I got a new, this is a small Wacom tap, like wireless tablet. I feel like I'm, oh, I feel like I'm treating myself. This is so great. My old tablet was really, really janky. Like it barely worked. Dang, you got, you got denied? Damn, dude. I should try and get a new MacBook as well. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Um, I need to turn off my uh, trackpad and turn on my Bluetooth tablet so we can make art. It's art time. This is uh, into us. Oh, we're already connected? Yes. Yeah, I love this thing. Yeah, really? You're in Brazil, right? Damn. Yeah, sometimes it can be super expensive in certain countries to get a MacBook. Yeah, wow. It's like a car, huh? I, I, can, ah, I can see that. I can see that, right? Here, to get... To get the MacBook Pro that I want, it's like four grand. You know, you could you could get one for two grand, but it's not gonna have the awesome, uh, you know, graphics and all that. But I think the one I want is like four grand. Just all the bells and whistles had like a terabyte hard drive, solid state hard drive. Yeah, they can be ridiculously priced, but man, they're good quality and they last a long time. Okay, so let's get this logo. First of all, we need to see this logo like with the outline on real quick. Uh, that's the MacBook Pro we want the poster outline. Hackintosh for the win! Do you have a dental floss? Do you have a Hackintosh? Have you done that? What? That would be... T what? What? Biter kid? No way. That's crazy expensive. Wow. Man, that's crazy, ridiculously expensive. So I'm using the, t um, the text tool here in, in Photoshop just to like line this, uh, Line this logo up. I'm paying attention to the small version in the top left corner so I can see about where I want to put this logo. It needs to have enough margin. Really? It was very easy? That's great. If you buy the right parts, huh? So what is, what's the key? What, what, how do you have to buy the right parts? Have I considered moving to Windows or Linux? Any particular... Uh, no, I've, I, I have a, I have a route in life where I, I took in my earlier days of programming where I was all Windows for like a good 15 years I was on Windows. And then um, I started experimenting with Linux. I had some Linux, um, I had Linux installed on my Windows machines and stuff like that. And then I finally got a Mac and I'll never switch back. The reason I prefer Macs is because there's no spy, like there's no adwares to worry worry about. There's no spyware and all that kind of stuff. It's very hard to get a virus on Mac. Um, and in general, Macs tend to like actually do what I want them to. On on Windows, you run into, or at least I had. I always ran into so many bugs on Windows and weird things that happen, and issues like issues, so many issues. I just want to get on my computer and make my game. I just want to get on my computer and draw stuff. I just want to code and have things, the whole system work. 
You know what I mean? So I don't mean to start, I don't mean to start a flame war or anything, but that's my preference. Kilogram with meat is thirty, yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Cool. This is a nice resource. We want to do a hackintosh, huh? Yeah, the Win32 API is, is dated. It's actually quite dated. They're, they're basing it off stuff they wrote like in the 90s, man. It's uh, from what from my memory of writing games back in the 90s, the Win32 API is still the same base the same base code. Yeah, biter kit. That's kind of what it is in general. A Mac is basically just like a good Unix-based operating system, really secure. You've got permissions on all your files. You got, you know, you got world world permissions, group permissions, personal user permissions. Like that's just a, a solid base for an operating system. I think it is. Yeah. Oh, really? It's not. Yeah, totally, totally. I know what you mean. You can get your Windows set up where you have minimal issues, but just the, the fact that you could potentially have issues is the reason why I, I choose to go where I've been going. All right, let's get this. Okay, I like that where that way that logo is placed now a little bit better, but I think I wanted the text to be a little bit more Squished in? That's 50? What if we were at zero? That's all right. Does that look better in the navigator there? I think that's a little bit more... It's a little bit more, but it's still a little more squished now. Oh yeah, so it's technically illegal. Yeah, Evermore, that's that's a good uh, that's a good point you bring up there. It's not like it's it's a uh, plentiful hardware support, but they do support their own hardware well. Yeah, there are. There definitely are. Okay, so let's start making this logo look sick. First of all, I got some effects I did on the Songbringer logo. Let's, let's see if uh, this particular file here, this version has that Songbringer logo, but did I keep all the effects here? Neptune Pink, what's up? Welcome. Yeah, I love this uh, this image too from Songbringer. It really turned out well. This is the this is the sort of dark version. That's a little bit less dark. I'm trying to see if I got this. Um, where did I put that logo? Oh, there it is. The big logo. I think I've got some. All right, sweet. Got a gradient. Oh no, I didn't. Ah, uh, did I say where did I put this? Where did I originally create this graphic? <laughs> right when you've got three and a half years into a project and you start a new pro. Wait, wait. Maybe it's this. Maybe this smaller logo has some. I might have to just start over. Start with a different logo here. This is the small logo. Yeah, I don't know where I God, I don't know where I put that. I worked on this logo somewhere in originally. <sighs> let's let's give it a shot. I'm gonna try and see if I can find this file. Hey Neptune Pink, where uh where did we meet? Or uh or have we met before? Let's 
Sweet, we're doing good on drop frames today. Okay, I'm going to dive into Songbringer's art and see if I can find where I, I started this uh, logo for Songbringer. And if not, it's cool. I'll just start over. I guess it would be in sprites. Oh, on Twitter? Sweet. What's up? Welcome. Welcome. Today I'm announcing um, I'm announcing that I'm renaming the project I've been working on to Wraithbinder. And now I'm drawing the logo and stuff. Wraithbinder is basically a uh, songbringer, but battle royale. And when you die, you get bound to the person that killed you. So you fight on for them. So the last person left alive wins. And... Yeah, that's it. That's Wraithbinder. I love how it's so much easier to explain. So great. So it might be in backgrounds. Oops. Oh. There's Bath Cole. What's that weird background there? Oh, it's just to give it background color. Okay, uh, so, where did I, I originally created the Songbringer logo in two different sizes. Oh, is it this one, logo? It's Wraithbinder. Pre-make five? Um, no. What's? Is that a, like a texture packer or something? What is pre-make five? Hey, dude, this is it. This is the logo. I found it. Dope. Really? It's got all these highlights and levels and yeah, effects and stuff. No, me. What? This isn't. Is this not the original? Where is it? Uh, oh, this might be the original down here. No. Nope. Shoot, this isn't it either. This is not the original. Oh, maybe it's this. Uh, I don't know. Oh, it's make. Really? It's better than Ninja? Let me check it out. Yeah. Wow. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, it's so hard to drag a window with my tablet. Ah, what the heck just happened there? <laughs> All right. So this is like a, one of your make files, basically. So it, oh, it does CMake or VS 2017. Sweet. Okay, so let me take a look at this. Workspace, architecture, configurations. I love this, how simple this is. Hell yeah. Simple files. You got great file. You got globbing here. It's so great. Good documentation too, sweet.
Sweet. Okay, so you got you also got GNU Make, Xcode. It's so wait you can do you can add Lua scripting to your build system too. That's kind of cool. Hmm. Sweet. I really got to check this out. I'm using I'm using Make right now still. Oh, let's let's get this stuff renamed too. Load Ragger becomes Wraith Binder. Oops. Sweet man, hey, thanks for chatting. Thanks for uh, sharing everything, man. Appreciate, uh, appreciate it. Appreciate all the stuff you've been sharing today. So, we'll catch you next time, brother. Good luck with everything. Let us know how it goes at the new company with the new game. <laughs> uh, I can't type. There we go. And I should probably rebuild all. And I should also, oops. What the? Oh. Okay, there we go. And let's go like this. Remove all of uh, those. Stop that. Rebuild all while we work on the art. Uh, where this original logo? I'm not sure if I'm be able to find this. Wait, if I take away that, look how much difference of a difference light makes in an image. It's so huge. Okay, so this was like. Right. This is not. Oh, see, there, that's what I'm. What I'm looking for is like I added some kind of effect. It's not just this gradient overlay. Like I actually did a. Oh well, I'm not gonna worry about finding it anymore. Let's just start drawing this one. Whoa. Why does this have so many frames? Oh yeah, because we're all like. Okay, whatever. Whoa. <laughs> what? That's crazy. I didn't even draw like it just this are this is like okay, so I used the same project from Songbringer's poster to create this Wraith Binder and so it's got all these different layers with all these different uh versions of the image. Let's go back to the original and we'll work on the logo here. All right, so I changed that width there, but I want to change it back to the, the spacing between characters back to like 25 at least. Okay, we can work with this. This is about the right width. This is about the right placement uh, height-wise for where the, the name here is going to be. So we can start with some effects.
Okay, let's grab this awesome pinkish color. Wow, that's like barely pink. And we'll apply some, uh, I think I want this all this color actually to be that color. Yeah, that's better. If I get some of these light effects in there. Okay, so now we need to make it kind of stand out versus the background. First thing, let's give it sort of a drop shadow. Let's grab one of these really nice dark, darker tones from the image here. Give it a little drop shadow. Um, you have to take off the size. All right, Diamond Killer. We'll see you, man. Thanks for stopping by. Good luck with everything. Enjoy the calm before the storm. Size, I guess. Yeah, size zero. Not global light. Make that 90 degrees. Distance, maybe. Whoa, whoa, what happened? Whoa. Width. Distance two. It's better. Okay, something that could really help actually with this is whoa. Let's make sure this runs still too. After we up oh, missing low dragger. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm going to get to that here in a second. On the, um, yeah, you can't really read Wraith Binder behind all that. So I'm going to work on that in a second. Oh, it's in build. That's right. We got to open up the build script. I knew there was one more place. Oh, that was just a sim link. Okay, so I gotta go to here. Remove this low dragger D. Wait, this one. Let's do that. And we need Wraith Binder. Build. 
products, debug, Wraith Binder. Okay, so we can get rid of debug and link to Wraith Finder's build products debug and remove release folder. Same thing here. Okay, so that should run. Famous last words. That's it. That'll work. What could go wrong? Great. Cool. We're back. We're back. We've renamed this whole app, and it's all still working. Okay. So let's get back to the logo. So yeah, you can't really read it, but I'm thinking that to help with that, we'll start with instead of actually. Yeah, let's do a little bit of stroke for a second. Same color as, as, the, as that, so. So there, that's a little bit more readable. Um, there's some effects that can really make a, a this logo look more 3D though. Bevel and a boss, is what I'm thinking of. Yeah, better, right? There we go. This is kind of like something what I was doing with the Songbringer logo. Let's play around with this and we'll get it so it looks good. For right now, it doesn't look good that great yet. My contour is kind of nice. Texture, oh yeah, texture is a weird thing. But here, we'll start with this, just this bevel and emboss, and uh, the shading and the angle. We want the angle to be a little different. Wow, that angle changes everything. Oh, that's sick. I love that angle. Okay, let's play around with the shadow mode too. So we want the highlight mode and the shadow, well, the shadow multiply, that approach probably give something cool. What's up, Kalein? Why am I renaming? Am I working on a sequel game? This is not a sequel to Songbringer, but it is a game in the Songbringer universe. So um, I'm renaming it because the name Loadragger wasn't very uh, conducive to word of mouth, right? It, can you even spell load ragger? How do you spell load ragger? Am I saying load or am I spell am I saying low, right? So it's like it's it's so hard to to convey to a friend the name load ragger. So I, I had to name it something more conducive to word of mouth. So wraith binder is a lot more uh, you know word of mouth friendly, and then um, and then also I'm simplifying the game's design a little bit. Load ragger was getting a little bit complicated in how you played it. So I'm simplifying it down to basically just uh, Songbringer in a Battle Royale, like Songbringer combat style, but a Battle Royale kind of game. And the, t the twist is that when you die in this game, you become bound, you become a wraith, and then you become bound to the person that, that killed you. So you keep on playing through the match. Veils and cool. I'm glad the name works well. Yeah, it's it's working well for me. I'm glad to, glad to have your... Very, uh, your uh, um, to have that reflected in your words as well. Thank you, man. Yeah, so I'm 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 just all around so excited about this. So we need less multiply on that. Sweet, that's looking kind of cool, but the high it's not getting enough highlight yet. Sweet, yo, Paul Six, what's up, man? Have I tried the app Art Text? No, I haven't tried that. Is it cool? Maybe I'll try it tonight. 
art text. Let me let me get a link to that, so I can remember to try that later on. I mean, I'll definitely play with that tonight. I'll, I'll on this stream. I'm gonna stick with uh, Photoshop because I it's kind of what I know already, and I don't really feel like in well. It's more that I don't, I can't really like install software and stuff like that while I'm live streaming, but um, but yeah, I'll check that out. Cool suggestion, man. That looked like it had some great features. And you know, it's not really. Sometimes it'll inspire you to do something because I'm gonna. I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this right, and then I'm gonna pixel art it. I'm gonna actually get down to the pixels and adjust everything, and this will be all rasterized and rendered and stuff like that. But it's nice to have some inspiration. Maybe that Apple will give me some idea. Be like, oh, look at this. You don't judge by the presets. Man, that's that's uh, that's great. Don't judge a software by its presets. Don't judge a book by its cover. I love that saying. What could go wrong with the new name? <laughs> exactly, exactly, Inko. Uh what can go what can go wrong? Man, what's up, man? It's been a while since we chatted. How you been? We need more highlight. More highlight. Um, it's not giving me the right the highlight that I'm thinking of. This is kind of a good one. Oh, there we go. That's what I was thinking. More like a that kind of curve. What's What if we play around with these curves though? Ooh, that's weird. Wait. Uh, whoa, that one's weird. Two triangles makes that, huh? Oh, that's kind of neat. It's like metal. That's kind of cool too. Weird, I just made it a gradient. Let's get this open. We need to see the navigator as well. I love being able to see this little tiny image at the same time as I'm seeing the bigger image because it just helps you, you know, you can, Get two perspectives at once. You don't have to zoom out and be like, oh, that's how it looks when it's zoomed out. You already got this little zoomed out version there. I kind of like this this um, contour right here. It's up and then down. But that's a good one too. That one's, that one's more like... It's pretty on with the angle too though. Work in sports, yeah? You need to find a new Bob? <laughs> I, I, I figured you made a job. Dang, dude. You gotta find a new job in three years? Ah. Oh. Well, wait, wait, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Is you, do you like your job right now? Do you, is this a good move? What would it look like with a different angle? Let's say we had like 85. Oh, this is sweet. Okay, now it's getting just a little bit too leopard printy. Dang, you're probably going to lose your job in a few months, man. Fighter Kid, your world is so much different than ours, huh? Well, and then, than mine. Than everybody's. It's 
crazy. It's crazy what what a different world it is when you go just halfway across the planet. <laughs> it's just halfway across the planet. It's no it's no big deal going halfway across the planet. Rocket Bunny, no way. What's up, Rocket Bunny? Oh, you're in this job for seven years now? Why do you say you're going to lose your job in a few months, man? Rocket Bunny, how you been, buddy? What about zero? What does that look like? Whoa. That's just no. No. Okay, what about negative 50? Whoa, that almost works. Huh. Kind of like that. This sort of like downlit version of the logo. Yeah, new name. It's now Wraithbinder. You're good. You've been good? You got your first job? Dude. Wow. What's your job, man? What are you doing? Yeah, Vail's in. Yeah. I like ha I like having the YouTube videos because I can like give you give a little update in ten minutes and it's a little uh, less time consuming um, for the for you as the viewer and also for me as the as the uh, producer of video. Uh, but I know what you mean. It's nice to have these live streams, isn't it? I like doing them too. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely gonna keep on the live streams for I don't know at least at least one a week, hopefully two or three live streams a week, and then I'll fill in the rest of the days with uh, uploads to the YouTube, ten minute style videos, more than these two hour videos. Yeah, buddy, it's cash. You got yourself a job on your hands. You're earning money. How's it going with with code, man? You you writing code? You learning more? Um. You're st are you still in high school? Are you are you out of high school yet? It's funny how time flies, man. Just a minute ago, Rocket Bunny was like 12 years old. Now he's not 12 years old. He's 13. No, I know you're not 13 anymore. Ha! I've asked so many questions, I'm just waiting for replies now. 70, 70 this is kind of cool. I'm liking this whole downlit version. So when you get to about there, it changes. I like it about there. Nope, more like there. It's kind of cool, 70, let's go all the way to 70. A seventy, all right. Yo, oh, you're a sophomore. Okay, I thought you were getting close to finishing high school already, but that's just my own, my own me like memory playing with us. My memory is um is a little bit on the downside right now because I had a long work weekend. I've been working on my van. My van's doing good. I like my van. I got this whole, it's like streaming van. I got it all set up for streaming now. Yeah, and as much time for code, but you've been playing with neural networks? Sweet, dude. Right on, man. So the question is negative 70 or 70? That's cool, but the light is coming from above. But we've got light coming from below almost here with the, with, uh, rock being lit by all this light. Yep. I got a TV van. It's basically a TV van. Yeah. I might as well have like a, a whole like TV antenna thing coming off the top. Huh. So, but you can't read it as well. 
Maybe that's just because I need to make that top a little bit less dark. I think that's what we need to do. If this were like less dark, it needs a different multi like mode or something besides multiply. I am I am currently it's the dev van. Dev van. It's like it's like uh there's an art, there's a musician. Donovan, I'm thinking of Donovan. Donovan. Where like I'm currently um I'm currently van living in San Francisco. But I've been all over California, um Oregon, Arizona, and even New Mexico this winter. So I'm kind of traveling all around. It's kind of a nice life. Just like moving around, live streaming from here and there. Life's good. Life's easy. No, life's not actually easy. Never, I take that back. But life's good. Don, Don no van. <laughs> Donovan did not have a van. He didn't even have a van. Why are we even talking about Donovan? Devandra Barnhart? Banhart? I don't I don't get the reference. Who's that? I feel like I should know who this who that is. Okay, well let's try something other than multiply. Can I use the whole shift plus thing here? Uh, I, don't, I don't think you can oh, whoa damn, what happened there? The Tukis van. Oh, it's also a musician. All right, gotcha. Oh, wait, we could play around with these different kinds of bevels, too. Outer bevel. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, that is kind of cool. Gave it this weird glow effect. What? It's kind of sick. Maybe I'll do a version of that in the background. Yeah, I'm making the cover art. So this is the, the Wraithbinder image so far. This is kind of like what the poster or the cover art will be. Advanced programmer inside. <laughs> I love the programmer inside. Oh, don't stop. Don't ever stop, Biter Kid. That, oh, I really need to get a sticker on the outside that says Programmer Inside, and it has the Intel-like logo. Oh, that would be so great. Programmer Inside. <laughs> Van Software Limited. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was a good one. Really good one. Man, I gotta get that sticker made. Maybe I'll paint it. Maybe I'll just paint it on the outside of the van. Like a huge, huge logo on the whole side of the van. It says programmer inside. It's got that swoopity Intel-like logo. Why not? Color burn usually works well, but why didn't that work well? That's weird. Oh, maybe it's because it's not enough. We gotta get it like. Yeah, no, that's not really that cool. There's linear burn, no. Normal looks a lot like linear burn. Uh, it's it's similar, right? So. Um, low dragger was five versus five, but lots of different roles. It's kind of a, it was it was like a team game. Um, my worry about low dragger was that it wasn't going to be fun for the individual, right? If you had a bad team, it wouldn't be that fun, right? You'd, it would suck. So how could I make how the idea was how can I make low dragger a little more simple from the game design perspective? And make it more fun for the indi more guaranteed to be fun for the individual. I know it's, I know you can't guarantee fun, but how can you make fun more likely for the individual? And so basically, Wraithbinder is just 
um, a Songbringer style combat system, right? So imagine like playing com playing Songbringer. You got bombs. You have your sword. You have other kinds of effects like that. But it's the the concept is it's a real time multiplayer game with ten other players or nine other players. So there's ten players total in an arena, and the last person left alive wins. So it's a battle royale game. But the twist is that when you die in Wraithbinder, you become you become a wraith and you become bound to the person that killed you. So you actually fight on, you can continue fighting, but you all the damage you do is is counts for the person that killed you. So basically um, by the end of the match, it could be like, you know, it could be 5 on 5, it could be 9 on 1, it could be crazy crazy unbalanced. And also Wraithbinder will have a boss in the middle. So not only are there 10 other players, but there's one boss in the middle of the arena and you can fight the boss and if you beat the boss, you become the boss. You actually you turn into that that boss's body, and you control that that the boss from then on. Um, and if you're killed by the boss, you become a wraith bound to the boss. So it's so that should be a crazy twist too. And yes, it's no, it's all two and a half. It's still voxel. It's still the exact same engine. Um, I have not. Just, you haven't seen this in a while, so I'll show you. It's a lot easier to explain to people too. Low dragger was like was difficult to explain. You know, it's, I was like, oh yeah, you, you're, you have to do this, you have to drag a lodestone back to your, your team's base, and um, it was just hard to explain. But Wraithbinder is way easier to explain. It's just Songbringer Battle Royale, where when you die, you become bound to the person that killed you. So yep, it's, this is the Voxel engine. This is where uh, a lot of the progress has been made so far. Um, the frame rate could still be better. There's a lot of optimizations I can make. Um, but imagine this, imagine playing something like this where you have your sword, you're also going to have a shield this time where you can actually use it. So in Songbringer, you stood still to use your shield. This game, you're actually going to have a button that activates your shield. So it's going to be like a, uh, a, little, a little bit different in how it plays. So you have a sword, a shield, you also have your boomerang still as well. You're going to be able to find bombs in the arena. Um, Boomerangs can bounce off each other too. So if you're fighting another a player and your boomerangs hit each other, they'll bounce off of each other and hit the ground. And you could technically pick up multiple boomerangs. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of fun little twists and stuff like that. I hope it's going to be a lot of fun to play. And because it's only ten players, I think it could have a good chance of succeeding, even if um, the multiplayer side of it doesn't. Right? It's difficult. The the risk for this kind of game is that it's multiplayer, right? If you don't get enough people playing it, the whole game could fail. Um, and that's that's a crazy risk to take. So how can you how can you mitigate that risk? I think it, if you make it fun, even for the individual, that it, in, it could still, you know, could still stand on its own without it even being multiplayer. But that is not the primary concern. The primary concern is making it really fun as a multiplayer game and hoping that it does succeed as a multiplayer game and kicks ass, makes a, a zillion dollars so that I can have an even better van. Right, see there you go, Biter Kid. Right, you can make a single dungeon with the leaderboard. Right, yeah, that's almost Diablo-esque. Yeah, there, there are ways to make this more of like a Right, more of a more. It's I hate to use the word guaranteed because nothing is guaranteed, but it's more more likely to succeed, I guess, if you can kind of, you know, you can. I can plan to have a, a kick-ass multiplayer game, but I could always add single-player elements too. So wait, when you become a wraith, you actually can hurt your hurt your the person that bound you for a while. That's interesting. That's interesting, man. I can't wait. I can't wait till this game actually gets to the point where you guys can play it. Um, I'm thinking it can be alpha by like uh, alpha slash early beta by January. So maybe like nine months from now, you guys will actually be playing this. Uh. And it'll have a, a Discord and all that kind of stuff. That's my hope. Um, don't take my word on that. You know how game development goes. 
It could be three months longer than that. It could be six months longer than that before it's ready for a real good beta. But I'm hoping for beta by January. Or, or our, let's say alpha. More like a al playable alpha. <clears throat> Color dodge, linear. Oh, these are the more lightning type things we want. These aren't going to work. Yeah, you'll play it by 2021, 20, probably. <laughs> hey, cool, man. Yeah, um, that would be sweet. Let's talk about that later when it gets time to me making like a Discord. I would love some help on that. And I think um, I'd like to do some kind of meta game on the Discord too. Like you, maybe you join some faction on the Discord channel and your faction can earn points or maybe you can earn experience points individually as a person on a Discord channel, like, uh, I don't know. But yes, I'll, I'll definitely need help moderating, you know. I can't do all the, I can't do everything myself, even though I try. <laughs> what? What could go wrong? So all these lights aren't going to work. What about differences or exclusion? Oh, that's because, oh, wait, subtraction. Oh, it's because this is black. Divide. T yeah, Twitch integration. Twitch integration. So that's, dude, Biter Kid, you've got a crazy cool line of thought there. Like, what if, what if when you die, or like, what if, what if one of the players in the arena is controlled by Twitch chat? Right? So you got 10 players, nine of them are real people, but one of them is actually Twitch chat. So the Twitch chat is controlling one of the players. That'd be crazy. And like they would live on when they, they died as a wraith, or maybe they actually win, and maybe they're the one that actually kills everybody else. Who knows? Thanks, Alessandro. Appreciate that, man. I'm glad we met. That would be fun to watch, wouldn't it? I'm doing it. We got to do some kind of Twitch integration for this game. Done. It's done. It's done. I already wrote the code. Boom. It's done. Okay. None of these are really giving me the effect I wanted. I guess multiply is it. But I wanted more of this purpley color. Like Thanos. Have you ever seen the crowd control extension on Twitch? Hell, I've heard about it. I, I saw Twitch's email about it. Um, that's that that's what we were just talking about, right? Where the crowd can, can like be a player or something like that. Is that how that works, Fails in? I haven't seen it. Have you seen it? How did it go? What was it like? What was it like watching it live? Keep this as oh, I was trying to get that purple color. Duh. Let's get this sort of like about there. Let's put this here. Oh, or viewers can donate like they they can. Donate bits and stuff like that. Yes, Alessandro, so when you're a Wraith, you can cause damage to other players. That's how this is going to work. Um, but you cannot cause damage to the person that bound you. And I know you were saying earlier, like, what if you could? But, but for now, the game design is that when you become a Wraith, you're just someone that can attack anyone but the person that bound you. Oh, right. Okay, so they don't play, but depending on the game, they can spawn things or buff players, depending on their depending on their donation and stuff like that. Yeah, I got you. Crowd control. Sweet. I gotta check that out some more. I love this idea of doing some kind of Twitch integration.
Okay, let's try a little more like contour. Oh, wait, wait. For that. What were these other ones here? Whoa, that's weird. Makes it look all like electricity. It's harder to read. Spam the match result in the streamer discord. What's that? What do you mean by that? <laughs> I would love for my game to become an actual eSport, but that's such a crazy high hope. I'm just, for now, I'm just excited to be making this. We'll see what happens. I hope, I would love it for it to be an eSport though. What's up with this outer bevel? How's that so cool? Let's keep it as inner bevel. Let's duplicate this though. We'll make this one like inner bevel. Or outer bevel. That's crazy. Yeah, totally, totally. I watched a um, I watched a, a, a YouTube video. Uh, well, it was a um, a GDC talk actually that I saw on YouTube from the community manager that did PUBG, and she was she had a lot of cool tricks, but they really did focus on live streamers. That's how PUBG got so big is that they focused tons of their effort on just like giving free copies to live streamers, supporting people in their live streams, and they had a dedicated person that worked like. Their entire work week was just like promoting the game to Twitch people, you know, like giving out keys like crazy. Or while you're a ghost, you can enter into objects or weapons. That's cool. That's interesting. That's an interesting thought. What? Why not? Um, that, sent, that reminds me of um, uh, Crawl. Did you ever play Crawl? Crawl's dope. And they're such an inspiration. I love their art. Uh, Dave and what's his name from uh, Power Hoof. Uh, when the when the streamer play by the end of the run, it lets the Discord community know how. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's sweet. And that integrates so it integrates to the Discord that way. Yeah. Yeah, crawl was awesome. I loved it. I really wish it would have been like online multiplayer. I would have loved to play that with some online. But it was it was really nice to play it with some friends every once in a while when I would have some friends over. I I had you know I used to have like one friend. It was it was good times. Oh, near you really? You're for you're in Australia. We probably talked about this before, but aren't they in Melbourne or Melbourne? Oh, whoa, that's chisel hard, man. Chisel soft. Whoa, dude. I like the smooth, though. What happens if you play with the depth? Oh, whoa, it's getting deeper. Now it's getting squigglier. Oh, sweet, dude. Nico the Ninja, where's he at? Is he here? Dude, uh, Melbourne... I could definitely live in Melbourne. In fact, there's two places I would I would dream of taking my van. That's Europe and Australia. I've been to both places already, but I've never been there with a van. And I love traveling in the van so much. It'd be so sweet to take a boat, some kind of ferry, get myself over to, the, to, to Oz, the great land of Oz. Oh, I love, I love Melbourne, dude. It's such a rad city. It's definitely one of the best cities in the world, in my opinion. That and Vancouver and San Francisco are some of my favorite cities in the world. Just gotta let you know. Don't do don't do cactus. <laughs> no cactus, boys. Not for you. Yeah, right. I know. It's I think it's a couple grand. 
to take a to take a, a vehicle across the Pacific like that. But if I get to Europe, it, I could probably get down to like I could drive all the way to Asia, and then maybe it'd be cheaper to van that way. This is like my wild dream. Like my wild dream is to get to drive to the east coast of the United States, take a ferry over to Europe, drive around Europe, and then drive all the way across Asia. And then and then drive around Australia too. Will this dream come true? We'll see. We'll see. Let's just look like with like smaller bits of that. Uh, 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 well, wait, like fifty? Huh? Ten? Definitely too low. Fifty? Starting to look good. What about 25? Still too too light. 40. So what's the difference between like 100 and 50? Yeah, I guess I like it about 100 better. Wait, 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 wait. A thousand. Yeah, Vancouver is a sweet city. It's really awesome. It's got a great international vibe. It's got the mountains. It's got the sea. It's got. I love when I love when you have mountains and the sea right in one city. That's super super cool. Okay, that's now what if what if the logo was a different color? What if the logo was above the light? And it had its own color effects. I'm trying to like exhaust all these sort of like idea type I ideas for the um, for the logo before I start pixeling it. You know, I'll actually go in here and pixel it all, make it look super cool. But first, I want to get all these ideas out. It's like let's just apply a hue on top of it for now. Is it partially transparent? Oh, it's not actually partially transparent. So that I'm thinking maybe like that pink hue. But the opposite of that. So if this is Right, this is our pink or whatever. The opposite would be green, maybe, or yellow. I gotta turn this one off. Yeah, magenta and orange. What? Is it? Yeah, orange is a good one. Maybe orange is what I'm was what we're looking for here. But where's this? okay? Let's get about that. Get this hue. This is three hundred three. So three hundred three minus one eighty would be uh, one hundred and twenty three. Is that right? Yeah, one hundred twenty three. That's actually green.
I don't know about green, but let's see what that looks like. Hmm. Hmm. Let's try that orange. Yeah, magenta, cyan, and orange. Uh, that is called, uh, tr is it triad theory? Triad? No, tri... Yeah, there's a totally name for it. <laughs> Make it the color of acid. Oh, that'd be sweet. Hey, that orange does look pretty good. Look at that. Let's try 33. Keep it along that. I like that. Yeah, that's pretty neat, actually. Okay, I'm gonna remember that. 33 is really good. What if we're more like reddish? Yeah, see, when you get to that reddish orange, it doesn't look quite as good. But this orange orange is actually really neat. That works really well. What about yellowish? So something something not quite right about that whole yellow and pink. What about greenish yellow? No. No. No, 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 no. But so this green actually works. This green color. Sort of brightish green actually works. But I'm not sure if it if it's the right the right color for this logo, but So yeah, we get this dirt, this more cyan color green doesn't look good, but then cyan itself, of course, looks dope. Oh, I like that. It's pretty cool. It's kind of icy though, huh? That's kind of cool too. It's more of like a sky blue. That even kind of works. Some of these blues are actually, they work. Yeah, see now when I see it, when I see it close to where the same pink is of, of the rest of the seen it doesn't work anymore now now I see it definitely needs to have its own color yeah, and these reds don't really work okay I like I like the cyan and I like the orange just like you said Malesin so if we're at 180 what's the number what's the number I'm looking for here um, multiples of 30 so we're at 303 right wait let me just confirm that isn't it 303 this hue three yeah 301 30 I think it was 303 before um, minus what would give us the one uh, would be minus 120 oh yeah 183 okay duh so yeah that's almost exactly what we had here 182 183 that looks good I like that 183 um, let's duplicate that and make this also apply to, to this layer and we'll turn that one off and this one will make the orange color so it's, it's, it's got to be just the right orange I think 33 was the, yeah 33 was good and 30 oh 33 wouldn't be right right on if we wanted to go multiples of 30 and we were 303 we and we go all the way down to thirty. We would need to be like uh, minus two seventy, right? Two seventy is divisible by thirty, right? Yeah, of course. So three hundred three minus two seventy would be thirty three. Oh, okay, so thirty three is the right. It's a good number. Okay, we'll keep that. I kind of like the orange one better. So right there's the orange one. There's the cyan one. Yeah, the cyan one. Is a little bit too icy, too cold. 
You got all this crazy electricity going on here. He's shooting lightning out of his hand. It's going to be hot right there. It's not going to be cold. So I think of the oranges, we're going to stick with that. Or maybe, maybe if we do orange with pink highlights or something like that. Or what if, what if the light is actually on top of it now so it gives it sort of a pink hue? Whoa, that changed it, everything. Okay, we've got to figure out how to make this light more dramatic or the, the logo more dramatic without applying that light. Wait, okay, maybe it just needs some levels. Not curves, levels. Let's definitely bring up that bottom. It'll make it a lot, all the darks darker. Oh. First, we have to apply it only to this layer. It's not bad right about there. That's 235. If we go lower, it starts like making it too too bright of an orange. If we go up way up to the top, it's not quite as poppy. Right about here. Okay. I like that. Oh, a gradient overlay can sometimes really help these too. I think that's what I did for the Songbringer logo. Oh, but uh, we have to do the gradient overlay, not like a normal blend mode, but it, like a multiply or a color. Whoa. Oh, We got it linear, we're going straight up and down. Um, multiply, no, no. Color burn, whoa. Linear burn. Overlay. Oh, vivid light. Interesting. Linear light. I like that vivid light kind of. Weird. Whoa. The difference is kind of neat. Exclusion, subtract, that's pretty dope. Whoa, if we go lighter with that opacity on subtract. Uh, it's not as cool like that though. Hmm. Uh, Hmm, luminosity is kind of neat too. It gives it more, more drama. Don't try this at home, kids.
Don't try acid at home. Try it out in a park with your friends. That luminosity kind of looks good, actually. Gives it a little more... Wow, it looks more metal, actually, though. Do we want, do we want this to look metal? Okay, let's leave it there for a second. I want to play with the whole 3D-ness of it all. Far Cry Blood Dragon's art? Yeah? What's the what's the Blood Dragon? Yeah, I hear you, man. I'm getting hungry, too. I'm probably going to stop the stream in 15 or 30 minutes here and get some dinner. It's good chat with you, Biter Kid. Was it, what was the Blood Dragon from Far Far Cry? Was it the, was it in the game Far Cry, or was that one of the people that worked on Far Cry? Oh, what I was thinking here was if we got if we just take these, we merge them together, and then. S undo that. And then paste. And then we can group these and put this here. Turn off the regular logo. Now we've got that logo. Yeah. YouTube Biter Kid. See you, brother. Oh, was it? It was a standalone game? Oh. Oh, what? Gotta check this out. I don't know why, but with the tablet, I can't grab this edge. It just disappears on me. <laughs> I can't make it any bigger than this. Yes! Look at this. I love his graphics, man. I love these graphics. Oh yeah, totally. Oh, here, I'll just do it. My, can I do it with the trackpad? There, it works fine with the trackpad. Dude, I love this. I love this art style. Yeah. Oh, I see how I see how that could remind you. Look at all this lightning they use here. And the pink colors too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at that. That's sweet. Blood Dragon. That's sweet. Oh, what? How am I? Tab oh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> I was trying to draw with the butt end of the pen there for a second. That was fun. Let's try doing it the right way now, though. Okay, so I just want to see before I before I like, you know move on to anything else. I would like to see what this would look like stretched with sort of a 3D sort of Songbringer-esque logo. So if I go like this, I can do this 3D stretchy thing. And so this can, I can stretch out the logo. What if, so what if we went with more of like a stretching the letters like that. It's pretty cool.
Okay, so we got that one. Let's see what this looks like stretched sort of in a downward angle. Or, I mean, yeah, downward angle. Hmm, it just kind of fits. It's, also, it's like the same thing I did with Songbringer's logo, but it just fits. Huh. See, that's kind of neat, but it's, it doesn't really seem to fit as well as that does. I wonder, I wonder if I could try another 3D effect. I've tried this before in the past, but I never really have mastered this. Let's see what it looks like actually 3D. Like, I think there's a way you can go in and make this a three-dimensional object. Oh, here, let's try this 3D menu. New 3D extrusion from selected layer or new mesh from layer. Uh, I think this mesh one actually sounds about right. Um, mesh preset cube. Uh, I don't know. What happened? <laughs> what, what have you done with my logo? What is this? Oh, did it put it onto a cube? I don't know any of the commands for editing 3D stuff and whoa. Oh. I don't think this is what I meant. I don't, not, a, not a new mesh, but a I think it's um New 3D extrusion. There we go. That's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, what would it look like with... Um... How do I, like, tilt that in the way I want to... Oh, here we go. Cry effect. That looks like translate. The tooltip's not coming up. That's like changing the camera. I want to rotate. Uh, not sure. Yeah. Here we go. Whoa. Look at that. Voxels, yeah, that might be a cool way to do it. Yeah. CRT effect, oh yeah, CRT effect. Making it out of voxels would be pretty cool. I would have to use Goxel, not Magicka, because this is way too many too many voxels for, for Magicka. How do I change the color of the extrusion? Boundary constraint, infinite light camera. Ah, 
What's this? Cat shadows invisible. Whoa. Cast shadows, yeah. Nah. Texture mapping shape preset. Whoa. Okay, look at that. We can change the shape preset. Oh, whoa. You can sort of play with what the depth looks like. Whoa, what the heck? Whoa. Yeah, so I'm thinking today we'll probably just be all playing with the logo, like this kind of playing stuff. And then once I finally find something that I'm settled on, then I'll go and start pixeling it or voxeling it or whatever. Whoa, that's crazy. Man, I am starting to get hungry. I'm hungry as heck. Wow, look at that. It's like twisting its twisting itself into infinity. That's actually kind of cool, this whole twisty thing. If we rotate that, can we, I want to I rotate. Not move, rotate. Ro rotate, ro rotate around. Hmm. <laughs> what are these things? I'm playing in I'm playing around in an area I've never played with before, the three D tool of of Photoshop. I forgot what software I was using there. Where was it that I was editing the Oh there it is, shape preset. Man, I could play around with this all day, and I probably will. I'll probably spend the rest of today working on this logo. Maybe even tomorrow. This is a very important part of a game. It's key art image. This is what... It's key art image is like the first impression that a player gets. You know, it's like first impressions make a big difference. Whoa, look at that. It's all soft. This one's all hard. Kind of like that. But... Did I actually do this on, uh, what's this? What if I go, okay, let's like turn that off. Is this the original? Yeah. Okay, so I'm playing with it. Oh, so what if I go there? I wanted to see it without all its like CRT effect going on. Make it a 3D volume. There's a lot of things you can do here. Is that giving? Is that overall giving the right look? Wait. Oh, let's get this rotated a little bit more. Rotate around X. Now I want to rotate around um, Y. No Z. Need a Z. Oh, not Z. Yeah, I think it's Y. Oh no, I guess it is X. I want to rotate on the X. Oh, that's the Y. No, not Y. It is X. Where's X? There it is. Yeah, that's the one I wanted to rotate. So it's not quite giving me the whole, like, effect I was trying to get. Well, but let's see. Huh.
it's kind of tilted at an odd Y angle, but that I like how that gives it some depth and stuff. Lots of stuff to play with. What I need to do is just smoke a bowl and um, geek out on this for hours. <laughs> but first, it's dinner time. It is dinner time. So, anyways, that's going to be it for this stream. Gosh, it's been a good stream. I'm so excited to finally announce this. I had this idea for this better name and this simpler design for months, and finally it's all come to fruition. We're eating the fruits right now. We're tasting the fruits. Oh, it's so sweet. It's so juicy. It's so delicious. Um, so thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the stream. As always, it was good chatting with you all again, once again. Um, and yeah, thank thank you. And we'll catch chat with you guys the next time, next stream, next video. So see you around, guys.